I'm Cheryl Vargas. I'm the owner of Art Studio 928, and we're so glad to be here with you today. Um, I am accompanied by my producer, Shelby, in the background, who's going to uh, be here to provide some trivia questions while I prepare the snowman for painting. Um, so let's get started without further ado, okay? So everybody should have um, a number 12 brush round and a number four brush that's also a round, smaller brush. You should have a pencil, uh, some washi tape, uh, a little container of acrylic paint to put the little dots on the snowman scarf, and a little toothpick for which to apply those little darts, dots. And so uh, with the washi tape, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Oh, and you should also have two containers of water um, and then uh, your watercolor palette as well, and your traceable of your the snowman and some carbon paper okay so i'm going to go ahead and lay down my card so that it's opening to the to the left and i'm going to secure this image down i'm sorry the card down with my washi tape which is falling apart can we get another roll of washi tape over there for some reason that piece that roll of washi tape is not cooperating so I hope yours is. If not, you can also use, um, and we're putting this on the edge of the card, you can also use painter's tape or masking tape um, or artist tape to do this. So just make sure that it extends beyond the edge of the um, card so that it holds the paper down to the surface so that it doesn't uh, buckle, which is the nature of watercolor um, the watercolor process, so don't feel like you're doing anything wrong if it does. So I'm going to go ahead and take this other washi tape and line this up on the other edge. And what we're doing is creating a frame so that when we paint, um, our painting has a nice finished looking edge. Okay, and then just kind of press your finger into that tape to make sure it's sticking to the surface. And you should be all set. Here, let's do one more here for good luck. All right, so you're going to need your blow dryer. If you don't have one handy, um, make sure you have, you run and get that or put me on pause while you run and go get your blow dryer because you'll need it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is transfer the image. Now, you can use um, your tracing uh, image here and some carbon paper to transfer your image down. But what I've done, because I don't want a big impression of dark carbon paper, is I've just taken a number two pencil and I've um, gone along the lines of my drawing. And then I'm just going to trace over that. So basically, I have uh, put the graphic on the opposite side of this page and I'm just going to use my pen transfer the image to the surface so I'm just going to go and follow these lines along and I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want really dark defined lines and I also don't want to create um, too much of a groove in my 140 pound weight watercolor paper um because we want the effect of the watercolors and not of my pen so just follow these lines along um, don't worry about the accuracy of them um, because we will actually use the watercolors to um, be dominant in this painting as opposed to the lines that we're drawing right now so i'm just kind of following along the scarf and little fringes here. And I'm sure that these uh, image, these lines won't show up very heavily on the other side, which is fine. Um, that's pretty much what I want. Don't want to be able to see the lines so much. And if I miss a few lines, that's okay. I'm just using this to give me an idea of where they should be. So to check to make sure I've gotten the lines there, keep my hands down in one corner, and then I lift up on the other, and voila, I have my lines. 
So this is the fun part. I really like this portion because um, uh, when we lay down water, it gives the pigment, it tells the pigment where to go. But before we do that, let's have a trivia question. So the trivia question is, which Christmas dish is known for its long shelf life? Is it fruitcake, cranberry sauce, Christmas pudding, or gingerbread cookies? Which of these foods has the longest shelf life? So now I'm just going around the edges here, and I'm even going to go over the lines that I drew for the fringes. And I'm just laying down pure water around the snowman. Just very lightly go in and um, pick up some water. Your paper should glisten. And just keep following that all the way around outside of the snowman. Try not to get it on the snowman himself because wherever the water is is where the pigment will go so we want to be going around his little nose around his face and up the side of his scarf and we want to keep going to the other side and did we get an answer for that trivia question oh we did we put it up and so we're going to keep going here it's fruit cake ah Okay, so I'm just moving this along. So if you're not sure if you if you got a spot, you can just like um, take a look from the side of your um, paper, like you know, just kind of lean off to the side and take a look, because you won't be able to see it sometimes head on. So just go to the side of your um, card and take a look. And then just use the very tip of your brush to get into those small edges between the snowman and his little fingers here. So I'm just taking the water and pushing it in between his fingers. Okay, so if you look back at what you've already done and your, your water's already dry, that means that um, you need to put more water. Because we need this to be wet in order to get the effect that we want. So just go ahead and bring that all the way down and turn your head to the side to make sure you're not leaving any dry spots or any big puddles of water. So if you look to the side and you see, oh my God, oh, that's already dry, you need to go in with a little bit more water. So I'm adding a little bit more water here to make sure that everything is still wet. We want all of this to be wet because the next thing that we're going to do is to add the pigment into this area for the background. All right, so I'm going to take um, some, some water. Which Christmas carol was the first song ever broadcast from space? Was it the Little Drummer Boy, uh, the White Christmas, Jingle Bells, or Let It Snow? Which one was the first Christmas song broadcast from outer space? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start picking up some pigment. So what we want to do when we're picking up pigment is to wet our brush. It was Jingle Bells. Is to uh, put our brush into the pigment and um, move the brush around until we've picked up enough color and then kind of drop it on the palette. Okay, as you can see that we painted some other um, Christmas images before, so I've already got some green and some red and some blue and some brown already here. Um, but what we'd also like to do is to drop some water, some droplets of water directly into the color to thin it out a little bit. Because initially, when you pull the color from one uh, of the palette's colors, it's going to be very intense. So we want to dilute that. And I don't want to wait too long. I want to go ahead and add some of this pigment to the Water, watercolor surface. So as you can see, it kind of bleeds here and there. It's kind of what watercolor does. Look at that. Very cool. So we're kind of making this snowy, wintry background. And we're moving very fast because at this point, mine is drying up a little bit and I don't want that. So I'm going to move a little faster so that um, I can take advantage of what watercolor does, and that is spread out all over the place. So I can see over here there's an area that's drying up. 
So I'm going to add a little bit more water to that area. And over here as well. So you want to just drop in some water. And this is just so you get that really smooth um, kind of a soft watercolor effect. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure. Oh, I always forget this little corner right in here between the scarf and his little hand. But that's okay. We're going to fill that in with some um, brown anyway. And here I'm going to soften this up. Okay, so normally we let that dry on its own and the colors would bleed together really nicely, but um, we don't have that time luxury. Well, we kind of do because this is a recording. <laughs> but this is just a little advice on what you could do on your own. You can pick up a blow dryer. So while I blow this dry, we'll leave that trivia question up and mute you so you don't have to listen to my blow dryer. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And so uh, the answer to the question is Macy's. Yes, Macy's. So, okay. So now I've got my canvas all dry. It's saying, okay, there we go. Let's make sure this is going. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. Um, okay, so there's one thing that I was doing while I was painting, and some water pooled up over here on the side. And you saw me touching my paintbrush there. What I was doing was just making sure that my paintbrush was 100% dry. And then I just took my paintbrush and dabbed that excess water, let it absorb back into my paintbrush. So you don't want pools of, of uh, uh, pigment. Uh, gathering at the corners because it kind of looks like you get this cauliflower effect. It's not as pretty as the subtle um, variations that you'll get from the water, uh, the pigment bleeding into the paper. So if you see that happening, water pooling in the corners or something like that, just make sure your paintbrush is dry and just drink them out of those corners. Okay, 
So now our background is all dry and we can go and pick up some red pigment. Again, the way we pick up pigment is we just wet our paintbrush and we go into the pigment color and then we transport it to the plastic um, little compartment here. As you can see, I already have that color. So I can just pick it up on my brush like so. So I'm making sure that my brush is not too wet. We don't want you know too much liquid. We want a pure red color because we're gonna go in and paint his little hat. So we're just taking the very tip of the brush and just kind of stroking that color in all the way around his little hat. And the way, oh, you don't have to use this huge brush that I'm using the number 12. You can take that smaller brush and do the same thing and with the larger brush though you just make sure you don't press down really hard you're just using very light pressure to fill in the areas of his hat okay it's a very vibrant vibrant color and there's another trivia question which christmas decoration is actually a parasitic plant Parasitic plant. What Christmas decoration? Is it Christmas wreath, mistletoe, holly, or poinsettia? Which one of these is parasite? Hmm. Never knew the answer to that. Never even thought of it a possibility until tonight. So you'll walk away with a little creative experience and a little Useless knowledge, mistletoe, yes, absolutely, mistletoe. Who knew? Now you can think about that. You ever step under some mistletoe? You know, we're standing underneath a parasite. <laughs> so I'm loving this beautiful red color. These are very vibrant colors that you can use in this palette. Got a nice variety. You could mix hundreds of colors with just what you have on um, this watercolor palette. Um, they're very nicely pigmented. Um, they're not the top of the line, but they're the best student art um, watercolor uh, paints that you can get. Um, and there's always a little bit more expensive options out there. These are great for beginners. So they give you a really true idea of how the colors perform or how watercolors should perform, as well as using 140-pound um, weight cold-pressed uh, watercolor. So uh, let's go ahead and give this boy a collar, huh? So yeah, just use the very tip of your brush. Fill in that little area underneath his neck. Okay, so which which reindeer, this cracks me up, which reindeer was Rudolph's father? Was it Dasher, Dancer, Cupid, or Donner? I mean, did you ever stop to think that these reindeers had parents? No, not me, but Shelby found out that apparently they did. So <laughs> there you have it. So the answer, the choices are Dasher, Dancer, Donner, and Cupid. Who was it? Who was Rudolph's daddy? Donner. Okay. <laughs> so as you can see, I've gone in and picked up, oops, look what I just did. Talking to you about that stupid reindeer. Put my orange into my white. So I'm just wiping that off right now. So it dries. Okay, there we go. One more swipe. There. Nice and clean again. All right. So I have my red down. And I'm going to go in and paint my little nose. But first, I'm going to put a couple of droplets of water down. And I'm going to pick up some orange pigment. Swirl it around a couple times and then add it to the water. Okay. 
that's how you use your watercolor paints. Never mix your colors directly on top of the palette colors because you'll just ruin them. Well, they won't get ruined, it'll just be messy, All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add some orange here and I'm gonna let my paper towel drink out the excess water from my brush so I don't drip on the paint. And I'm just gonna go in and put that orange down. And now I'm gonna dilute my brush and just use Just use this color to blend these two colors together. Okay. And just make sure that you use just the very tip of the brush and you'll be fine. In which state does a Christmas story take place? Is it Illinois, New York, Pennsylvania, or Indiana? Which one? Okay, now I'm going to pick up some brown, put it down on my um, palette, put a little water in there, drop a couple drops. And I'm going to put in his little arms. Just using the tip of my brush. And let's pick up some of that um, orange that we used before. And kind of blend that in. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, and only this time I'll start with the orange. And we'll give his little stick fingers. And then I'll pick up a little bit of brown. So we'll put like a little shadow on the leaf. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to take a little blue. We're going to use some of the blue that we used before. I'm just going to drop a couple of more drops of water in it because we don't want a really heavy blue. Now we're going to go around the perimeter or around the circumference of the snowman himself because um, even though we know that he's uh, basically white um, in snow, sometimes there's a cast of blue. So I'm going to go around the perimeter of my little snowman with a little shade of blue. And I've got a little bit too much water on my brush, so I'm going to tap some of that out. Just dry my brush off with a paper towel and then put it back into this little pool of water and absorb some of that out. And then I'm going to take some water and then just kind of blend this line to give the impression that my snowman is just a little blue. And we'll do that on the same on the other side as well. And then we'll just take some clean water and blend that line into the snowman. And we'll continue it on the bottom. All the way to the center. Okay. And then let's put like a little, a little mound of snow here. I'm going back to the blue that we use for the snowman. Blue underneath, because he's probably casting a little bit of a shadow. Oh, thank you, Shelby. And then uh, she just gave me clean water. You should try to keep your water as clean as you can. And then just kind of blend that all in. And you'll have him sitting on a little mound of snow. He's so happy. And now we'll pick up a little black and we'll make the little coal eyes. So again, I'm using this bigger brush only because I've done this a couple of times. You're more than welcome to use a tinier brush to get into small spaces. So, but even with a smaller brush, you have to only use the tip of the brush. So I'm working directly from the black because it's one of the few, co few colors where you can do that. 
Um, and then I'm just using the tip of my brush to make his little round eyes. Okay, so I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just using the very tip of my brush. Just the last two hairs on that brush. So very, very, very tiny lines we're making to make that little snowman smile. Oops, and I forgot about these little lines too, huh? Well, they could have been a different color, but that's up to you. If you want to make them red, you can. If you want to make them brown, you can do that too. And I think so we have another trivia question. It is, what is the first company to use Santa Claus in advertising? Was it Mac Microsoft, uh, Ford Motor Company, Coca-Cola, or Nike? Which one was it? And now, last but not least, since we've already painted our little scarf, we get to put the little polka dots in. So I'm opening up my acrylic paint, and I'm using my toothpick, because this is the easiest way to do it. You try to do it with your brush, you're gonna make big blobs everywhere. So I put the toothpick in there so you can have an easier time of this, all right? So we're just gonna pick up a little blob of paint on the end of our toothpick. All right, let's pick up some more. Well, let's, let's start with the um, hat and just kind of dot, dot, dot. Another dot. And that. That. And you get the picture, right? That, that, that. Everywhere. So, this is the easiest way to. Um, it's not uncommon to. Um, use a uh, different medium to uh, enhance a portrait. So, you know, it's not uncommon to mix watercolors and acrylics, and that's what this is. Some people would use like, uh, they call it gauche, 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 gauche. Well, I never figured out how to pronounce that, but anyway, it's this. <laughs> It's not watercolors and it's not acrylic kind of paint that we use to supplement enhance artwork. So you just keep tap, tap, tapping along on your little container. So I kind of use a brick pattern. And we have a terrific question. Who wrote the best-selling Christmas single? Was it Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, Mariah Carey, or Otis Redding? Who wrote the best-selling Christmas single? I'm almost done. And voila, I think my snowman is a very happy with what he has there. So we're going to leave him, try not to overdo it. You got to always know when to stop when you're doing art. So I'm going to stop right there. Now, one thing I recommend when you're doing watercolors is uh, make sure that you sign your work in pencil. It gives it that rustic kind of look because with watercolors being the first art form, it's just one of the most basic and pure. So just put that in and pencil. It'll just give it that extra stroke of authenticity. And so I hope that this particular painting that you did, this will be your first one. You have three other watercolor cards uh, to do. So I hope one of these makes it to a friend of yours so they can see how talented you are as an artist. Um, but other than that, um, I think we're pretty much done. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, maybe we'll see you on Facebook or Instagram. You can follow Studio 928 
we'd be glad to see you there. So uh, have a happy holiday. Thanks for having us into your homes today and stay safe out there. Bye, take care. Thank you.